Is there something that you wish everybody knew as a marketer in a manufacturing company? Marketing 101. A lot of folks just don't really know what it is to do marketing and how it relates to the company as a whole. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the Foremost Media Marketing Chat Podcast. Got Evan Facinger here from Foremost Media, also John Ballard. Hey, Evan. And we are excited to talk with Lori Andres here, the Marketing Manager at Nord Drive Systems. Lori, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good, thank well, you. Good, like you said, excited to chat. So would you mind just kind of starting the conversation off, explaining a little bit about you know, how you found yourself at Nord Drive Systems? Sure. So I, uh, I have a bit of an interesting past in terms of career. I, I actually started in information technology. Uh, I provided end users support and eventually worked my way up to a sysadmin role for a CRM system. Uh, at the same time, I was also doing some freelance web design. Uh, and, and as I started going through my career, I became more interested in the design side of things and, and made the decision that I wanted to switch my career from IT over to a graphics and marketing role. Um, I was extremely fortunate that my employer at the time had a marketing assistant position available. So I expressed interest and was given the opportunity. Um, ever since then, I've had a number of roles uh, in both B2B and B2C environments, uh, which ultimately led to my current position at Nord Drive Systems as their marketing manager. Well, that's interesting. You, know, you don't hear a lot about sysadmin roles really shifting over to marketing roles a lot. I mean, maybe more so now with, you know, the, the data and a lot of the, you know, technology that, that's in, in use in a lot of different marketing roles. But was there, what was it that was drawing you to the marketing side of things? Well, I think just the the content in the, the, the work that I would be doing was more interesting to me. You know, part of that sysadmin role, well, actually the large portion of that role was uh, database administration. So my primary job was data in, data out, data cleansing, and that just became a constant process and I needed a little bit more. So I started, you know, with the with the web designing uh, as a pastime, you know, just decided we're going to make this switch and see how it works. And it worked out fantastically. And it's been a good journey so far from the sounds of it. Yeah, I've, I've so, been incredibly fortunate. <laughs> and is there something that you wish just everybody that was, you know, uh, found themselves in a marketer or as a marketer in a manufacturing company? Is there something that you wish everybody knew? or just understood in general? You know, marketing 101. The places that I've worked for in the fa in the past, some of them who are manufacturers, they, they really kind of struggled with what marketing's role is because it wasn't directly related to you know, developing product, manufacturing, sales, fulfillment, and servicing. It, it kind of lives in its own little world on the side and, and what I've experienced is a lot of folks just don't really know what it is to do marketing and how it relates to the company as a whole. You know, a, a story from my past, uh, great manufacturer, but they, they weren't really sure how to give me the proper direction in order to be successful. So they essentially said, go do marketing, which I can certainly do, but I had no idea what that meant. You know, what are the goals? What is the C-suite's definition of success? What are the expectations of me? Uh, and I think uh, a lot of manufacturers uh, don't look at that as closely as they should before bringing on an internal marketing team or even hiring an agency. Yeah, and, and that's a good point is that if you don't really understand marketing yourself, how can you hire somebody to do it? You know, how can you set the proper expectations? Do you really know what you're asking somebody to do if it's just the general, you know, umbrella term of marketing, right? Well, and these days with the digital realm expanding as much as it has, I mean, that's such a broad 
area, you know, marketing can mean so many different things. So really identifying what a company needs to achieve, what their goals are, and being able to effectively communicate that to their marketers or to their agency, that will make a huge impact in, in the return on investment that, that they'll get. I had a conversation with a guy yesterday, Lori, that actually is really interesting to me. He was, um, they were using us and they were having some good success with our marketing program and so much success, in fact, that they decided to bring it in house. And, you know, I think they were contracted for about 15 hours a month and they went in house with it and hired uh, actually two full time employees. And he said, you know, we really didn't gain as much traction, you know, with you guys as we did when we got the two full-time employees in. But um, what was interesting to me is he was comparing like our 15 hours to their, you know, 80 hours a week that they just invested in employees and saying, you know, they don't. Yeah, it's definitely not in apples to apples exactly. when you're talking yeah. internal versus agency. And that's another key thing that that needs to be differentiated. You know, in the case of Nord, we use both external agencies and we also have in-house talent to, to create the, the assets that we need for our comprehensive marketing program. And I think, you know, at least for us, that is a really good balance between having someone who's working 80 hours a week, very focused on what's going on with the company and being able to do technical writing and things to a level that, that an agency can't be expected to do. I mean, some things can be extremely complex. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think right. you need a good balance there. You know, you, you can't be an expert at everything in, in the broad spectrum of marketing. So, you know, where is your need and, and where do you need to bring in resources for that? It's, it's an interesting exactly. balance. Sure. And then bringing in the resources that can achieve those specific goals. You know, if you want to improve your website, you might bring in a web developer or an SEO person. You're You're not necessarily going to bring in a person who only does graphic design because they're mm -hmm. not going to have the the capabilities to deal with the development and back end side that you really need to boost your website and get more traction. Yeah. So would you say that's one of the, the, the biggest changes that you've seen in you know the overall I guess marketing for a manufacturing company over the past few years? Yeah, I would say for sure and especially uh with digital coming to the forefront and you know it's no longer just hi would you like a 728 by 90 banner at the top of our website now we have all kinds of different opportunities and they they cost real money so how do you how do you balance that and and get enough exposures in the areas that you need without taking away from that core business and on that note, then, you know, as it shifted, it kind of goes over to digital, right? Is there mm -hmm. anything more specific that you think everybody should be doing in the industry, at least marketing wise? Well, the easiest thing and the thing that we've had a lot of success with is getting into rich media, video content, especially, um, you know, now you don't need a $10,000 camera to shoot really good, impactful content. You know, we have our sales folks who will go out to customer visits and they can take their smartphone and get a nice short that we can use for social media, for our website. And, and it doesn't have to be a huge production. That's another, another pitfall I think a lot, of, a lot of people run into is, oh, we have to script it and we have to have all of these shots and everything and have it be so grand when you can get just as much from something that just shows a little peek into the world that the company is in and how they service the customers. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of uh, people, at least from my experience, you know, want to see anyways, whether it's, you know, potential customers, current customers, you know, they want to see what's actually going on, not necessarily a, a highly staged production video, but also employees you know, potential yeah. people that are going to be, you know, applying and wanting to work there. Like they want to see what it's actually like, not so much that, that, that corporate video that you typically think of. Exactly. And it also is a balance of what messages go onto what channels. Social media is a great example. 
And it's interesting you bring up employees because we just had a post go out uh, last week where one of our employees was driving down the interstate and saw a truck with a Nord drive box on the back of it. And they snapped a really nice picture. You know, it's, it's something that isn't expected. It's something that's engaging and, oh, hey, that's something that anyone could see while they're driving down the road. And, and it's just something a little bit different from the norm of here's product A, this is what product A does. Uh, it's just showing that little bit of, uh, I guess, human element to, to the company and the products. Yeah. And it shows that, you know, there's cool stuff that you work on and do. And once you become part of that, you know, once you become an employee there, right. If we're taking the, the employee standpoint, you actually build cool things. You might, might see him care enough to take a picture of. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, having employee advocates, having customer advocates, they can all help provide these things too. So it's, it's really important to build those relationships and and work hand in hand with all of your partners to to get a great end result. I think one of the neat, unique I things you that, guys are doing over there, Lori, that that uh, not every company is doing is you're actually trying to educate your your um, employees on the neat things you are doing. You know, I think some companies don't really take the time to to do that. And can you explain a little bit about how that's going for you? Sure. So, so we have a couple of things that we're doing. The first is we've put in place a monthly newsletter that goes to all of our internal folks and lets them know what's going on in all of the different departments. Um, and it's, it's not a long piece. It's a couple of real quick blurbs and some images saying, hey, here's what's going on in other areas of the company. Um, and then people really have that sense of connection as opposed to us being in a silo. Um, and, and that's real easy to get stuck in your silo and not see what's going on elsewhere. So, so we do that. We also have a social media advocacy program that we put in place. So our employees can actively engage with, uh, with our posts from our main page, our, uh, our customer pages, our other subsidiary pages. Um, and, and even if they don't choose to engage, they still can see what's going on in the whole world of Nord, uh, showing the, the successes that we're having that, that they contribute to, but don't always see. I think it's, it's a neat program. I mean, I think a lot of bigger companies like yourselves just don't take the time to educate their, you know, rank and file employees on what's going on. And, and I, I'd imagine that having your employees all get eyeballs on your social media posts and comment and engage probably drives uh, more engagement from the, the end user as well, just because of the way the rankings work. So definitely, definitely. And, and I'm, I'm happy to announce that as of Monday of this week, we have hit 20,000 followers to our LinkedIn page. So, you know, wow. just taking that extra bit of time uh, to cultivate those relationships really has a significant impact. That's it's a and big number a lot for an industrial with, manufacturing company. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Have you been doing a lot with the like paid advertising to get there, or is that really just no, the, the natural it is organic employee all engagement? Been natural with video shorts with uh, these employee uh, either either short stories about uh, an application or a short story about what an employee is doing uh, as part of a co- company culture initiative. Um, we just really try to show our products, obviously, and and talk about the quality and the service and all of those things. But people are really hungry to know how that company ticks on the inside. So giving that little bit of, of a view into the day-to-day uh, has really done a lot for us to increase engagement and following on social. What are some of the... Um... Marketing wise, what 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 do you think everyone in the industry should start doing, you know, in in the industrial manufacturing space as far if you had advice for somebody in the industry just starting out? Sure. Well, I think, you know, going back to my previous comment, you need to have a plan. You need to know where you're going to focus. Uh, You need to know what what types of things you want to try to create and and figure out the most efficient way to do that. You know, something we're working on with video content is just trying to get a lot of B-roll and things that we can use as the puzzle pieces to create unique video content that we can use in all of our mediums. 
And uh, having that library, uh, you know, video and also images has has made it really uh, easy, relatively speaking, to pull everything together and have kind of that united front message that goes out to the world. Well, and speaking of easy, what do you think the, the biggest challenge that marketers in a manufacturing company they're going to face over the next five years? You know, there's there's really two that come to mind, and they're both related to digital marketing. Um, the the digital realm has brought about so many new opportunities to reach the marketplace, and in a lot of cases, budgets are not growing to accommodate that. So, as a marketer you have to look and really prioritize and figure out what stays, what goes, what maybe gets uh, reduced spend and, and try to get exposure in these new mediums without taking away from your campaigns that you've already been doing. You know, I kind of consider that that core marketing and then having that reach out into some of these new areas um, that that can be a struggle because uh, a lot of times that's not something that a C-suite or or senior managers will have a lot of insight on. They just know you're coming to them with a request for tens of thousands of dollars above what you're already spending. So so there's there's an educational aspect there, uh, trying to make sure that the budget fits what the goals are. And then the second part of that is just creating the assets. You know, do you hire an agency? Do you bring people in-house? Do you increase an in-house staff? Do you give more hours to the agency? Um, and those those decisions have to be in line with what your goals are within the time frame, or you're really going to struggle. It has to it has to be cohesive, and and it's it's a challenge for companies because everyone's different, you know, and, and those, those answers and the de decisions that are made can have such a huge impact on managing campaigns, effectiveness of campaigns, and that overall return on the investment. So, so pre-planning, and uh, that's going to be a critical piece to be able to fit into all of these areas as digital grows. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, there's a ton of great points in there. You know, one of them, I think, too, is, you know, being able to sustain the internal employees long term. You know, when you decide to make that marketing hire and you bring it in-house instead of rely as much on, you know, like an agency, for example, because, you know, I think the general thought process there is, you know, then you have more ownership of it. You can control it. You know, you've got that person uh, working for you directly versus just the agency. But, you know, I mean, you take a look at that and talk about the actual ability to sustain that that hire. I think that we've all seen, especially the past couple of years, just what that turnover looks like. And as people start to shift jobs and change roles, you know, do you actually have the processes and everything else in place to be able to have the marketing hires be successful internally if you're not going to outsource it? Exactly. Or find the balance and figure out do you need a part-time marketing person to do those kind of more involved tasks and then have the lion's share go with an agency or vice versa? You know, it depends on the mm -hmm. complexity of the product. You know, our, our gearboxes, it's a gearbox. It's a relatively simple, but we have over 20 million configurations in our standard product line. Um, so, you know, there's no way we're going to know every minute detail. Uh, but we do want to show the world that that we do have a lot of options that that come standard without having the added cost of custom components, the added cost of design work and development for those things, uh, you know, and and finding what those key messages are and, and mirroring that in everything you do will will, again, give you that return on investment and and give you the most bang for the buck, if you will, uh, with the resources that you have available or, or that you can afford. When you approach the C-suite about, you know, extra budget, how important are the, like the numbers, like return on investment numbers, or, um, you know, how, how hard is that to get at for you guys these days? 
it's a challenge for sure. Um, it's, 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 it's rare to have someone who's in the C-suite who has marketing experience. I am extremely fortunate at Nord that uh, we do have uh, an executive who used to work in marketing. So he understands things conceptually and, and we're able to, to speak about things in detail and, and, and not hit a brick wall in that conversation. Um, it's real easy for something to go over someone's head just because they don't have any experience with it. You know, their goal is to keep the company going forward to, you know, make sure people get paid, to make sure customers are satisfied. And and we as marketers kind of dig into the it dig into the details and get down in the weeds for all those specifics and, and explaining that, well, we can do all those things, but it's going to cost X amount. Um, it, it's establishing ex expectations and and really keeping that line of communication open. Um, data, yes, tracking, not everything is trackable, but uh, anything you can do as a marketer to show that uh, you're getting traction or that you're getting uh, uh, some return on investment for those dollars is just going to get that understanding at a higher level and give you a better option of getting more dollars to be able to do even more. Right. And I think now with, you know, the technology is in place and, you know, we'll see how the, the cookie list web and things like that change a lot of this tracking, you know, ability and insights into the effectiveness of the campaigns. But even now, like you said, you know, there's certain things you just you can't track as well as you like. You have to infer a lot of the information and the data, but at least being able to have an idea and, and put some, some some numbers together, I think, is, is critical to to get that buy in, you know, to have some of that why you should spend the money on. It's not just the the arts and crafts side of things for, for marketing. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You have to be able to show that information, whether it's hard data or whether that's trends that you're seeing and, and really be able to lay that out in an easy to understand format. Because most likely if you start getting into the weeds and the inner workings of how these things function and what it takes to make it happen, you're going to lose them. So you really have to stick to the bottom line and what you think we can achieve or that your company can achieve by, by adding a little bit more to that budget. So in your opinion, is there anybody in kind of that manufacturing industrial space that's just doing a great job at their marketing right now? Yeah, the first one that comes to mind uh, is a company called Affiliated Distributors. Uh, they're commonly known in our industry as AD. Uh, they're a distributor supplier resource network and they have a ton of information that's useful for distributors of all sizes. Uh, this is especially critical for those who are very small and don't have the ability to afford any agency hours or bring in anyone in-house and they're just stuck. They know they have to do this marketing, but they don't have the resources to be able to make it happen. Uh, so AD has a portal for all of their members where they can log in uh, they have e-commerce data, images, um, they have uh, direct support for members for anything hosted on their portal. So they can say, I'm looking at this, this looks interesting to me, can you help me make this happen? And they will provide that as a part of the membership to help them set up an e-commerce site uh, to import certain supplier data into their existing website. Um, and it's it's been incredibly helpful for us and and huge, hugely helpful for uh, for distributors because it's a centralized resource where it's not just the download. They get help and get some direction on on how they can be the most effective with limited resources. You know, another thing they have is continued education. Uh, they have incentives that go along with that to keep people learning and keep them engaged and keep them coming back and 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 using those resources. Um, and, you know, for us at Nord, we work very closely with them and, and we're getting a lot out of what they provide to suppliers uh, that in turn goes to the distributors to help them be successful. So, you know, it really goes uh, it's beneficial to, to all sides. 
Right. And I think you've heard, I mean, anybody in the industry at least has heard a lot about, you know, content is king. You have to do content marketing. It all revolves around content, but, you know, useful content. <laughs> I think that's, that's the, the key, the key yes. component there, right? You know, it's educational. You're getting the value out of it. You know, there's some utility behind the content uh, that you can actually use is what makes it worthwhile. Absolutely. And then, you know, as I mentioned before, more of that experience marketing where you're showing an application or you're showing, you know, in our case, we have had gearboxes that have come back for their routine maintenance and we just show someone in our service department working on one of the gearboxes. It's something that if you aren't an employee, you don't have visibility into and and we're showing that and, and giving people that experience of how things work on the back end to make sure our customers are taken care of and that they're happy with the product and happy with how we're taking care of them. So, and speaking of educational content, then is there certain resources that, that you're drawn to that you read regularly to get some of your marketing information from? Well, I, I try not to focus on the same resources all the time. They, they can tend to make you think a certain way, or uh, even if it's a completely unbiased resource, it's really good to get different points of view on the same topic. So I tend to jump around quite a bit, um, but I do have a few go-to resources, uh, some of which uh, the Association for Strategic Marketing, Social Media Today, HubSpot has a great marketing blog and uh, also the Content Marketing Institute. Um, those resources have been extremely helpful. And of course, you guys at Foremost Media have also helped us out a lot to, to really craft what we're doing and, and put our best foot forward. Okay. Happy to hear that. Yeah, I think those are you know, all good places to, to get information and I think you said it best, right? You, you can't just rely on one source because one source a lot of times does have an agenda, right? Even if it's mostly unbiased, there's a certain, you know, area or expertise of marketing that they might lean towards or there's a software that, that they're selling that it all kind of wraps up to. But, you know, just getting those difference of opinions because a lot of times it's, you know, we hear it a lot, at least on our end, where, you know, uh, uh, best practice gets implemented from a blog article, right? Somebody wrote a blog article with the best practice that gets copied from other places and people just, you know, take it as law as, as something that you have right. to do. But, you know, sometimes it's not the best way to go. <laughs> when you have some exactly. Of, you know, you know and, and, and you have to have to always remember that behind every blog, behind every white paper is a human and that human has opinions I, I, and and. You know, if you uh, kind of take a look around, look at other resources, you know, I will have random things pop up in my LinkedIn feed that I'll click into and just kind of see what it's about and see what's out there. Um, so so I, I really try to keep an open mind and, and really actively uh, keep an eye out for things that are interesting or that may be of use in the future. Uh, there's just there's so many resources out there, you know take it all in and, and figure out what works for you. Right. And the good ones are actually written by humans as opposed to AI, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. It's hopefully it's a recent, you know, Google update here that there'll be, you know, less and less of those being found, but I guess that remains to be seen right now. Definitely. You know, the, the technology is coming a long way and, you know, as marketers, we have to kind of sift through everything and figure out what works for our company. Um, it's it's not law. Blog A, blog B, none of it's law. It's all information that that we take and and we figure out based on all of those recommendations what works for our company because no company is the, is the same as as the other. We're, they're all very mm -hmm. unique. And, and while there are guidelines that can be followed and that we do follow as marketers, um, there's nothing that says you can't think outside the box. Exactly. And the best practices are should be used as more starting points versus the written in, written in law. Exactly. Exactly. So is there any, I guess, marketing success that you're most proud of so far throughout your career? You know, the one that I, I would say I'm the most proud of is I had uh, worked for a 
dealer with uh, many manufacturers that uh, that we sold their products. And something that we didn't have that was that was strong was a was a formal co-op program. We we kind of had done things loosely with, hey, do you want pages uh, pages of ads in our catalog? Oh, we could do this on our website. Um, myself and our merchandising man- manager at the time actually sat down, went through all of this feedback, looked at the things that people were the most interested in doing, and we formalized uh, a co-op program with discounted ad packages uh, for print, for event marketing, for website advertising. We had an entire a la carte menu where they could choose you know, a showcase banner on a website or, or a brand page. And, and it really gave the manufacturer, one, ideas to get the gears turning and, and two, to generate that ad revenue and have it be not just dollars coming in. The manufacturers actually got a really good value for it. And, and that program took off and has generated uh, a lot of exposure and a lot of dollars that uh, that really helped the company uh, get a leg up in terms of being able to get into more comprehensive marketing. Well, that's great. It's good to see you know those things resonate, right? Because a lot of times you have the ideas, you work on it, you build it, and then you know sometimes just things don't seem to hit as much as you think they would. So the fact that you know they're excited about it, everything's been showcasing for it, yeah, that's a great success. Yeah, and listening to your customers, listening to your suppliers, that's huge. Uh, that, you know, internal customers, external customers. You know, I always I always joke with people and say, you can never send me too much feedback because everything I do as a marketer is to serve our internal customers, employees, and our external customers. Um, and without that feedback, we, we'd just be in the dark. And, and I like educated guesses. I don't like all out guesses. <laughs> well, and, and it's good to get the information so that you know what to use with it. Exactly. So, so success wise, you know, I guess it's good you have that. What about failures? I mean, what's the, you know, I guess, is there a failure that you've learned the most from? Yeah, it's uh, it's an easy one uh, and something that a lot of folks have kind of uh, fought with over the last several years, which is going 100 percent digital. Uh, we had had a campaign uh, with one of our manufacturers where the idea was let's go 100 percent digital because it's trackable. We're going to get more placements. Um, everything that comes with with a digital uh, digital advertising, uh, we rolled it out. You know, we probably had twice as many individual placements as we did with a mix of print and digital, and it absolutely tanked. Um, we did not. It, I mean, even the digital ads didn't perform as well as they had when it was paired with print advertising in the corresponding trade publications. Uh, And that was a big eye opener for us. Um, We weren't really sure what to expect, um, but we figured we'd give it a shot. And yeah, it really, it really did not go well um, to the point that we actually had some calls from customers asking if we were going out of business because we had stopped placing print ads in some of the publications. Um, and that was, you know, a part of this 100% digital and a part of it just our overall marketing strategy. But uh, perception in the marketplace is is critical. And making rash decisions uh, to pull out of a publication or uh, to pull out of advertising on a website, for people who go to those resources frequently, that can put up a red flag. Yeah, I mean, you have to be where the eyeballs are. And as much as the digital adoption, you know, really has taken place and, you know, probably at the fast forward button the past couple of years for sure, uh, you know, there's still eyeballs in other places. And sometimes digital is crowded. You don't see as much from it. So, 
you know, we're a digital marketing company, obviously, right? So I'll be the first to admit we're probably biased when it comes to how we feel about digital marketing and everything. But yeah, at the same time, you know, you have to recognize the value of some of the off, you know, digital channels, whether it's print publication, events, you know, all of those. It's just got to be part of your overall blend of how you're going to get in front of the, the right people. Definitely. And it doesn't always mean that print is the answer. It could be different mediums that becomes your blend. You know, in our case, we still had a lot of customers who got the book in their hand and wanted to flip through it. Um, different industries may be completely comfortable going with, in, with all digital. Uh, we just at that time uh, didn't have success with it. So what channels are you really focused on right now? Biggest thing we're working on at Nord is expanding digital presence. Um, we've done a lot of work on the user experience for our website. We're bringing very targeted email campaigns into the mix um, as opposed to kind of those more general marketing type emails. Um, obviously a lot of work on the social media side, trying to get advocates uh, both internally and externally to to bring us these ideas and and things that we can show the world um, to to give them a good idea of who Nord is as a company, you know, and and how we work to to service the customers and and you know how strongly we feel about making sure that customers are happy. Yeah, and that's and that's what you have to do, and I think that. You know, with trade shows kind of coming back, do you have your, I guess, uh, how are your expectations this year compared to the past couple of years? Well, uh, it's been interesting the last couple of years. Um, we have had some shows that there were so many people there, we couldn't believe it. We were shocked. And then two months later, we'd go to a show for a different industry and it would be a ghost town. So it, the perception of, of, of attending the shows and where the value is, is very industry specific. And, you know, obviously uh, dependent on business environments and, you know, how the world is operating, you know, obviously the last few years have been a bit of a challenge and, you know, some folks are, I got to get this business done. I'm showing up. Others are a little more hesitant. And they look at getting their information online as opposed to in person. Um, even with our sales side of things, um, some folks prefer to just send an email and some people are, want you to physically be there to, to talk through all of the challenges and figure out how we can help. Well, and it goes back to, you know, what you said before, different channels. Right, making sure yeah. that you're where they are instead of just putting everything into one. Exactly, and it might take a little bit of trial and error. You know, that's that's something that's a part of marketing. Um, we 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 make our best educated guesses, and if something doesn't work, we try to figure out why. Um, perfect example of that: we had a print ad that went out, and we had done an ad study along with that, and we had gotten some some feedback from the readers about what they did and didn't like about our message. And we actually, uh, a few months later, sent out an updated ad and we got a much better response. So again, listening to what people are saying, figuring out what resonates with them. You know, I work very closely with our sales department. So what I'm doing is in line with what they're doing for the customers and potential customers so we're on a united front and that just shows strength as a whole. So any commonly held marketing beliefs that you just flat out don't agree with whatsoever? You know, the biggest one for me is that data and reports are the end all beat all for everything. It's important to have information, to identify trends, to lead the company down the right path. But I continually see folks who are in marketing and, and even other departments with, within a company, they just get lost in the data and they don't utilize other resources that are extremely beneficial. Um, 
that practical experience. Uh, folks who've been in the industry for decades have a ton of experience and knowledge that they can pass along that can assist in marketing efforts, uh, you know, more so than a bunch of numbers can. And, and, and using those numbers as a guideline, as opposed to this is what it is, uh, it's just keeping that open mind and utilizing all of your resources. Um, not everything that comes from a spreadsheet is, is, is your gospel. It's, it's meant to be a guideline. It's meant to show you things that are resonating, things that are not, and, and how you can pivot to get, uh, better engagement with your marketing. Yeah, and it's not that the numbers aren't useful, right? Not that the numbers don't Absolutely. tell a story and that they offer insights for it or anything, but they can't be the sole thing that you look at for it. You know, it's almost uh, very similar to what we're finding right now with, with advertising uh, a lot, right? With digital advertising, um, a lot of the different channels, you know, Facebook, for example, they're, they're pulling away a lot of the targeting capabilities, whether it was something that they were trying to do as sort of a self-policing, you know, we don't have such creepy data, even though there's a lot of evidence to point other words, or it's Apple, you know, with the new iOS yeah. update restricting the ability to get it that you just don't have that same amount of data and insight that you used to rely on. I think so many people were just focused in on targeting. You know, I'm going to target the right sure. people. I'm going to show mm -hmm. this ad that isn't really well thought out. It's just an, an ad, but since it's to the right people, it's going to work. Uh, you know, and I think we, we, we've shown time and time again, you know, it's not really the case. It's not just about the targeting, you know, the, the creative does matter. You know, it's a, it, it's the mad men concept of, of what, what are you showing? What are you doing? What do you actually have in that ad? Because the creative, a lot of times is the difference if everybody has the same targeting capabilities. Exactly. And, and that data, you know, you can go to, to a research site and you can get reports and you can get, well, you can get hundreds of reports, but you can also go and talk to a salesperson who's been selling this product for a very long time and get that supplemental uh, information that either proves or disproves the data or or gives you insight as to how you can make adjustments. And, and it has to always be a constant evolution, evolutional process. It's it, it's always going it's never ending exactly just like the channels you know you can't just do exactly. data you can't just do creative exactly. anymore you can't just do one channel you know it's everything's blended together yep and you know sometimes it can feel like a never-ending battle but uh <laughs> you know you really have to look at certain things again figure out what your goals are and and adjust what you're doing to to get to those goals or to get closer to those goals and, and as you do that, and as you get that information, whether it be data, whether it be feedback from customers or employees, that just builds up your arsenal to, to be able to be agile with your marketing, to uh, change what you're doing to, to resonate and to, to get people to listen to your message. Exactly. Well, Lord, this has been great. I mean, a ton of great insights. Uh, I think you you know, really came through with a lot of great information for everybody to listen to, digest, use any kind of parting insights that you'd like to leave us with? I guess the main thing is, is keep an open mind, uh, listen to people who have the experience and, and do your best to, to keep things simple, to be able to get you know, approvals and buy-in from folks who, who don't eat, sleep, and breathe marketing like we do. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, this has been great. I, I appreciate it again. Thank you very much. John, anything you'd like to add? No, well, thanks so much for your time, Lori. Like I said, it's great to talk to some um, people in marketing that really have a diverse background and understand it. So it's been a pleasure working with you and appreciate your input today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to the Foremost Media Marketing Chat Podcast. If you want to stay on top of your marketing game, make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. For more episodes, show transcripts, and marketing insights, go to foremostmedia.com.